Hey everybody, it's Tom here. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to make kind of a quick announcement. Uh, we recorded this episode about a month ago at this point, and we were joined by our buddy Jeremy Levine, who is the host of the Vinyl Countdown podcast. Definitely check out his show, links in the show notes. But since the time of recording this podcast, his hometown in Louisiana was kind of devastated by Hurricane Laura, and a lot of people he knows just completely lost their houses. So so Jeremy is doing an incredible thing by trying to raise a bunch of money for his neighbors, his family, and victims of Hurricane Laura. Uh, we're going to put a link to, if you want to check it out, if you want to contribute, if you have anything extra, a little bit will go a long way. Just wanted to let everyone know uh, Jeremy is safe, but some of his uh, some of his area has been unfortunately just kind of torn to the ground. Uh, if there's anything you can do, please check out the show notes, reminiscentpodcast.com slash episode slash 189. The top link in our show notes is the relief page where you can donate if you are able and willing. Thank you so much and into the episode. What is going on, everybody? I'm Tom. And I'm Pat. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. Tom, we've got a guest. Mm. We've got a guest today. we got a guest. A good guest. Our resident all-time low enthusiast. <laughs> right. we got our buddy Jeremy, who is the host of the Vinyl Countdown Podcast. Uh, we accidentally share each other's episodes all the time, it seems like. So we thought we would come together, talk about So Wrong It's Right, which I'm glad... I've got him here to back me up because I went into today thinking, oh, I know this album front to back. And I started playing it. I was like, oh, my God, I've never heard this album before. (laughs) (laughs) In your defense, Tom, I mean, we talk on the show a lot about you and me having essentially the same iTunes library for like a three calendar years. Yeah. (laughs) And we had um, put up or shut up, I think. The, the majority of our whole high school experience. Yes. And one of the things I wanted to talk about, we can do this now or we can do this later, but you know, there was apparently they were in, with Fueled by Ramen for a bit, and then they went over to Hopeless, and then pretty immediately they released Put Up or Shut Up, which was like a EP. It was like seven or eight songs tops. And then a year later, they released this. And the fact that Remembering Sunday is on this album and not the weird first demo, I don't know. It's just chaotic and strange in the timeline. I just wanted to like at some point sit here and be like, how close were we to getting kind of like a super duper mega all time low debut album with like the best of both worlds because that had to have been in play for like a minute. I don't know if Hopeless was just in a rush to get these dudes on camera somewhere and get the coffee shop soundtrack video out there. But anyway, I I was like, man, this I don't know because Jeremy, I don't know if you want to chime in. Like, was this your first exposure to all time low or? I think it was be- because. I don't know where I heard or what I heard first, but I know I, I it was probably uh, Dear Maria or something. And that then prompted me to go find other things by them, which I, I think, I mean, you talked about it, Pat. I, I got a um, coffee house or whatever soundtrack, that song, and then the acoustic version of J.C. Ray. And that was all I'd heard. And it was like, oh, I, I kind of like it. Okay, cool. Then I bought this album and was like, ah, it's... It's a bit of a departure. Like, it's a little bit brighter than what I was normally into, even now, I guess. But it's kind of held this weird nostalgic place for the last 13 <laughs> years. So, yeah, I remember I had Dear Maria, uh, Six Feet Under the Stars, and Remembering Sunday on whatever collection of when someone was like, here's all my all time low stuff. I don't know how those three, I just like have had, I thought the Girls of Straight Up Hustler was the recording sounded different than a bunch of stuff on So Wrong It's Right or um, Put Up or Shut Up. I don't know. It's all just wild. I've said on the show before, I've had Jay-Z Ray acoustic and non-acoustic on the same playlist for like a long time. Um, so I was just into it. But then this album is just very different than the band I had imagined in my head. It's horny, A. I think we can all agree that this is the horniest <laughs> Neon Era album. Possibly, debatably. But um, I don't know if you guys, I did want to touch on the cover real quick. Is this the the face of the Neon Era? I don't know. It's one of the most 2007 things ever. <laughs> I guess <laughs> this whole band, yeah. I would say their videos too, like the hairstyles, the the outfits, just the general atmosphere. It's like it's a f-ing time capsule. <laughs> like. Yeah, I mean, when I think of 2007, 
I think of All Time Low and Mayday Parade. Again, we did the Jamie All Over episode not that long ago. I kind of pair these bands together because my buddy Sam, one of the most important music Sherpas that I have to this date, he introduced me to both of these bands on the same day, which was a, a wild change in my music consumption for quite a while. But all I really had were the LimeWire singles, which were mostly from Put Up and Shut Up. And I guess I didn't realize it wasn't off of this record. So, Pat, I mean, I think you took those songs and it was mostly Put Up or Shut Up plus Remembering Sunday plus Dear Maria. And those are really all the songs I remember. I was stunned that I have no recollection of this album at all. I thought I was listening to it the whole time definitely wasn't yeah i don't know if they were rushed onto the into the forefront all their videos are really weird and lack i guess what would appear to be any thought process at all behind them (laughs) production or writing wise they're all just so weird um they're just doing gymnastics i think they just like interrupted a little girl's gymnastics practice to do the carver sub soundtrack one it seems like um and there's one weirdly on this album there's a video on youtube for pop and champagne which is the last song on this album which was weird and it's very white sunglasses, kind of in bad taste, I guess. I don't really know. It's just bizarre and chaotic. Um, yeah, I. to the point about being the face of the neon era, I did want to mention this real quick before maybe we do fun, Fast Facts or whatever, but I did look up that Cute Is What We Aim For album with the weird cartoon girl silhouette because both of these have that. <laughs> um, and I didn't realize the name of that album was Same Old Blood Rush with a New Touch. And my only thought is like, how were we just unaware for a full decade how horny this era of um, (laughs) pop punk was? But they both are kind of not identical, but I would say those were the two front runners uh, in my mind, I guess. But anyway, I'll I'll put the floor to you guys in in terms of fast facts and stuff. Well, you know, um, it's funny you mentioned uh, Cues What We Aim For. Is I I was looking up something and one of the facts I had was that I think the reason they didn't initially get signed to Fuel by Ramen is because they they had just signed Q is what we aim for. <laughs> so they're like, oh, we can't, oh, wow. we can't support can't two. two of, yeah, two of right. It looks like they're, I guess they're too similar, I guess, or whatever. And they're like, yeah, we can't support like both bands or whatever. So sorry, guys. Interesting. Man. Picked the wrong one. <laughs> right. Put totally. their money on the wrong horse. Because All Time Low is like still very, I don't want to say profitable, but like very in the process of being a band. I mean, they, they um, I think they released an album this year, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Big, big like social media push. I think it was like Wake Up Sunshine or something like that. But they all had like different Twitter profile pictures and things like that. So there was like a big marketing push behind it. So, yeah, I mean, they're just they're still doing it. Of all the bands, I don't know if I would have picked them at the time to be like, yeah, they'll be doing this in 15 years, like, you know, steadily releasing albums and stuff. I remember this, not not controversy, but this story back in probably 2016 when I was listening to the Encore podcast a lot. They were also a music commentary podcast back in the day. And All Time Low put out an album around that time that would have taken number one album in America, all of America for that week. But it was beat out by the Fast and the Furious soundtrack just for that (laughs) one Wiz Khalifa song. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and like, I remember Jason Tate being like, this was our genre's chance. And we got beat by the Fast and Furious soundtrack. <laughs> so, I mean, they're still killing it. That's a Charlie Puth flex for sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're still doing doing good things. And I mean, now we have s- simple creatures and stuff. So, yeah, Alex Gathgarth, Gathgarth is um, prolific and still giving the kids something they'll cry for. So, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) So Jeremy, do you have any, uh, any, any fast fun facts or what's, Well, uh, I had that about, uh, the fact that, you know, cute is what we aim for signed first. And they were like, Nope, sorry guys, you, you're gone. But, um, (laughs) also, which we we can get into later, but, uh, the, the song come one, come all, uh, Gasgarth and their guitarist, neither one of them liked that song at all. Like, just I read in interviews like they actually hated it, but they were, they were like, yeah, there was like numerous other songs in that session that should have gone on the record except for that one. Yeah, that's definitely the outlier, I think. And I, I was reading something that they came into the studio with 15 songs for uh, Matt, Matt Squire and Paul Levitt, and they ended up only keeping three for the record, which is kind of common for, you know, bands going in kind of young working with a producer trying to help them develop their their sound their sonic brand whatever 
But I can't imagine that of those 12 songs scrapped, there wasn't one better than <laughs> Come On, Come All, because that song is a fucking stinker, man. <laughs> well, I feel like they cut their legs out from under them, releasing the EP less than a year earlier, or whatever the yeah. timeline was about it, because it's like, all those songs are insanely good. And then and rushing a full length, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just think like misplayed i mean obviously they i'm sure they it all worked out for everybody but um, right <laughs> except for the fans who could have gotten i don't know if there was the best off of put up I, i'm not just gonna repeat myself all day today when we really just should be talking about <laughs> um the wrong kind of right i don't even remember i'm getting words mixed up in my head so wrong it's right but i'm still thinking of the mega album super album and i will dream about it every day for the rest of them until i no longer draw breath i don't know why i had to say it like that but um anyway too intense, too intense. There's easily like three or four songs they could have dropped off of this record and pulled from that EP and just made, like you said, just one super record. Like it would have been seemingly super easy to do that. Yeah, like Dear Maria going into Jay-Z Ray or something. I don't know, it's just like, yeah, missed opportunity. All right, should we get into it? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I don't really have many fun facts except that uh, the the record was produced by Paul Levitt and Matt Squire, who we talked about Matt Squire last week. We talked about Paul Levitt a lot. They're from Baltimore. Other bands that were recorded at SOMD Studios, which is Matt Squire Studio, gonna love this. Panic at the Disco, Boys Like Girls, Hit the Lights, The Main, and Cute is What We Aim For. Could it be any more on brand? And yeah, then uh, yeah. later, Matt Squire kind of blew up and started producing for Kesha, One Direction, Selena Gomez, and Ariana Grande. So he kind of was thrust into a different uh, sphere of, I guess, importance in the music industry. And um, yeah, Paul Levitt, uh, he's a great engineer out of Baltimore. Uh, the guy that I worked under worked under Paul Levitt. So part of my lineage, <laughs> but, uh, Ted, and again, Ted Jensen was the mastering engineer, biggest players in the industry went into this. So hopeless was really pushing for this to be a huge success. And it kind of was, it took 10 years for it to go gold as an album in 2017 with, uh, dear Maria going platinum in 2015. So I'm sure they, Damn. they recouped yeah, this their was, investments. This was the stretch of the decade where people were figuring it out. So for them to botch it this bad, I have to, like, I don't feel like we're speculating too much, but like, this was misplayed for sure. Like it should have gone gold <laughs> way sooner. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like for all the songs all time will put out early in their career to not come away with an immediate or to not come away with anything platinum, I feel like is kind of a raw, like, I don't know. I, they f***ed it up. I don't know. Sorry to make you edit out a curse word, Tom, but like, I don't know. They just totally botched and I'm mad. I'm, I don't want to be mad. I'm happy now that we get to talk about the songs, but yeah, damn. I feel like we were deprived. Damn you hopeless records. <laughs> and now they just feed us all the best music that we know of today. So thanks, hopeless records. <laughs> but also f*** you, but good for you. <laughs> Good for you. All right. Anyways, this is how we do. First song is I. Okay. So this came out in 2007. We're just about at the 13 year mark. It was middle of September. And I remember so many bands in 2008 that sounded exactly like this song. The bands that come to mind are City Lights. And there was a band from the Midwest, I think that only put out one EP. They were called Red Car Wire. They reformed to become Freshman 15. But it, it's just like everyone wanted to be the cute boy, seen hair, pop punk, you know, singing the song about the girls. Like, I feel like All Time Low, the image that I have of this music at that time, talking about these subjects, in my mind, All Time Low created that. And this song is just like, the perfect album opener for how I think of all time low. And again, heard the song for the first time today. I have no idea how I missed it, but it made me think of yellow card. We talked about last week, like what is their brand identity? Like we honestly have no idea. I feel with all time low, you know what it is. They do it very well. They go for it every time. Some, and they usually pull it off. And this is a really good album opener that just is like quintessential all-time low i think i think i agree with that that's um i don't know if this is blasphemous or not but the feeling of this song it sort of was like like if blink 182 never grew up it's like a blink light sort of <laughs> like you definitely hear the the, the influence <laughs> of course but uh that's where it always got me i guess when i first heard it, i was like oh that sounds 
vaguely familiar in a, in a weird way. And I, and, you know, I liked that it. it drew me in, but, um, yeah, I think you're right though. I mean, this sound kind of was, I guess they pioneered it in a way. Put it in the spotlight, whatever for, for this style of band. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like at the same time, it also feels like, who is this band? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it's an identity crisis for me because after hearing "Put Up or Shut Up" kind of exclusively, it's like we're the party, you're the people. Like what? <laughs> They're like boys, raise your glasses, girls, shake your go go go. You know, shake your asses or whatever. Like what the <laughs> hell is going on? Like this is the douchiest <laughs> band in the world. I didn't even realize they were like a party band. And I made a note here: like half the songs on this album are about having a legendary night. And I was thinking about that gap in the music industry between the Black Eyed Peas releasing "Tonight's Gonna Be a Good Night." And that's that band fun releasing that song tonight. We are young. And for like five years, it was only about, it was like a bunch of songs written as if the people were going to die the next day. Like, no, we need, we need tonight to be good. We need it. And this whole album is that, I don't know. It's very strange, but kind of like you think at the beginning of the decade, Jimmy Eat world, the middle music video where there's a guy in a closet too afraid to be at the part of the underwear party or whatever. And then here they're like, we're the party. Let's f- a lot. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, it's, I don't even know if it's really technically emo anymore. It's just, I don't know. It's such a, I guess it's so far removed from Chris Carabas singing very quietly to a room full of polo wearing weirdos. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> Good album yeah. opener though, of course. It's fun. I was going to say, it just kind of dumps you right in. You know, I think it's a it's a very good starting point. Kind of lets you get an idea of what you're kind of what you're getting into. Maybe not lyrically, because it does get really bad <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what, what are your grades, guys? I think what, for people who are just joining uh, the show, we when we play the God tier game, it's either like blows our mind God tier A or B, like typical, like, I guess, grading. Hmm. I mean, I, I'd, I'd go B plus, B as in boy plus on this one. It's not my favorite on the record. It is really good, but it's there's like at least three or four other songs that I think are maybe better overall. I'll, I'll give it a B plus as in batch. Um, <laughs> just because I love that word. <laughs> Uh, but also, again, I have no memories of any of these songs, so I feel like most of mine are just going to be solid Bs across the board, except the ones I'm familiar with. Again, apologizing ahead of time, but it's it's fun. <laughs> it's fun music. Whatever. I'm not the party. Uh, so, you know, I can't super relate, but it's, it's <laughs> high energy and I appreciate it. Yes. I'm going to give it an A because of the chanting. <laughs> because I thought it, they were saying kill, kill, kill. And I'm like, what a weird <laughs> mixture of things. They're saying go, 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 I guess, instead of saying the word asses for the after the boy shake your glasses line. Um, I don't, yeah, I think it's a great album opener. I'm like, okay, I don't really like who Hopeless was painting you guys to be at the time or maybe who you just fundamentally were. It's hard to tell. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'll give it an A. I think it's strong. And then you kind of get into track two, let it roll. And you're like, okay, all these songs are... I wonder how many of these will sound this similar, question mark? <laughs> not, to, to, not to just like trash the album two tracks in, but I don't know if you guys feel the same. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty weak song. Like, extraordinarily weak. Should not have been number two. No, that's not a good follow-up to have such a good opener and then this be your number two. It's like, yeah, this this could have been buried like at number eight or nine or something and been totally, totally. fine. Should have been. <laughs> So do, do you want to hear what Song Genius has to say? About, okay, so this line is pretty f- straightforward, I imagine. The the, uh, the time on the clock reads half past four. I'm wide awake and thinking with my pillow on the floor, right? It's like, okay, sure, we've been there, I guess. But um, they, like, really go all out <laughs> with it. <laughs> so it's, uh, <clears throat> Metaphorically speaking, he's dropped his pillow to the floor because he could have given up on sleeping, knowing that it won't be happening that night. It could also represent his restlessness for the pillow, which supports his head, is nowhere near it. So his thoughts are unfiltered and untamed. <laughs> what the f- Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, we've got some genius lyrics forensic is the best analyst. part. <laughs> genius lyrics is the best part of society. It's the only <laughs> thing that keeps me going during the pandemic, I think. Um, that's tremendous. 
<laughs> the pillow could mean a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, genius lyrics. Like I, honestly, I use it kind of a lot. Like when I'm looking for meanings for songs, or maybe they, they usually have little clips of interviews with artists and that kind of thing. It's like okay, it's cool for for that. But sometimes when people are just unhinged and left to their own devices, it's <laughs> out of control. Which you, I mean, you guys know that, but it's it's something. Well, it's kind of like Amazon reviews. Like it's a good tool <laughs> and it's used by people, but the weird ones are weird and uh, yeah i love finding ones that don't really fit and just a can't be helpful but b definitely just aren't helpful at all but um tom it looks like you backed me up on this and actually looked up the line i wasn't quite sure a what the wedge is mm. i've never played six cup i thought six cup where well, they were probably talking about beer pong but jeremy have you have you guys ever played six cup I've, there's a couple of references here that i'm like oh maybe i'm not hip i don't even know what six <laughs> six cup is to be honest with you I assumed it was beer pong. That's I what I know. thought too. But Tom, you you looked up what the wedge was. What is it? Genie's lyric says it's it refers to a stretch of land where the borders of Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland intersect, and that's where All Time Low is from. So the wedge, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Are they like Philly ish or Baltimore ish? I think more Baltimore ish. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of that line, the, the six cup line, what about the line right before that? Where it says, but all I can think about is sex. <laughs> I mean, you know, <sighs> man, with the theme of, of the episode, I guess, and this album, it's like he talks about the sun and it's like, you know, when it's rising, when it sets. But all I can think about is sex. It's like, we get it. Alex, calm down, dude. It's track two. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're being upfront about it, question mark. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. Got to appreciate that, I guess. But <laughs> At one point in the show, Pat, you said that you relate All Time Low in a similar vein of like Take Him Back Sunday lyrics, where it's very abstract and metaphorical. And I guess I've <laughs> never really agreed with you on that. And I got to say, this is the least I've ever agreed with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have it in the next song, and I hope people can... If I've ever said it on the show, which I know I have, um, and I'm going to say it again for the next song because I think it. I'll, I'll, how about can we just wait and save that for Six Feet Under the Stars? I'll explain myself a little better. But yes, right. having not been aware of what this album was, a the color of the cover, <laughs> b how horny it was. I don't know why I'm like trying to dance around the word when it's just accurate and <laughs> describing what's happening. But yeah, I, it's like this band, it's just a different band. It's kind of like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type thing. Um, anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll get into that later on, on, on track three, I think. Well, do you just want to go there right now? Well, I'll give Let It Roll a, a B. I'll, I don't know. Yeah, it's just okay. a, another song that sounds like the the rest of the album. Yeah, same. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd give it like a, I, I don't know, maybe like a C Maybe maybe even a C minus. Oh. It's kind of a, I don't know, not my favorite. Damn. Yeah, maybe we should just jump ahead to Six Feet Under the Stars, <laughs> which, weirdly, one of the ones off this album I had heard. Yeah, like, for going to continue to, I guess, say that I was confused that I just didn't know until <laughs> I got into college and there was a girl sitting in front of me with this album cover on her background. It's like, oh, all time low has a real album that's interestingly colorful. And I didn't know that for like eight full years. But anyway, <laughs> I was aware of this song. I think this song is great. I'll just jump out ahead and give it a God tier right away. Big fan of um, all of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? You don't have to give grades right away, but I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this being track three. I think it's one of their stronger ones on the record. You know, I would, uh, I would have to agree with that. This is one that... Um, if like let's say like uh I don't know it popped up on my shuffle just outside of listening to the album I wouldn't skip it like it's what I'm like ooh this song great and you know it's not a uh, super uh, horny which is kind of good they it <laughs> it's it's clever but it's not like it's just in your face like hey we want to f- like it's they they reserved it a little bit and it's like it it's for the better I think. But I also found out that the song is about a 17-year-old Alex dating a 25-year-old married girl. <laughs> so, well, dang. sneaky horny, but <laughs> <laughs> No, I I love this song. I think it's a god's ear. It's one of the few that I knew. Uh, there's a lot that I love about it. The bridge just repeating verse 1, which I've never heard a bridge go back to a verse before. 
I think that's a really interesting structural choice and it works. I've always loved this song. I always thought they were saying State Street, which is like a same the big street like downtown in Erie where Pat and I grew up. And just today I learned it was Thames Street and they're yeah, singing about Thames, Thames, Thames yeah. yeah, Thames Street. And they're singing about this dock and it's like, oh, shit, I've been there. <laughs> like I had a lot of friends <laughs> that live in Baltimore, you know? <laughs> so it was kind of fun to like relearn that today, but really good song. I, I, to me, this is like all time low. Yeah. I think it speaks to like bending like, oh, they wrote this song about me. He even talked about a street in my town when it's not State Street and it hasn't been. But this week I learned it wasn't State Street. It's like, oh, well, I still am going to believe it's because it, he doesn't necessarily pronounce Thames super well. And I think like in our defense, but um, Tom, yeah, the the Brit, the lay claim to the evidence fingerprints sold me out uh, guilty, but I'm safe for one more day. Um, yeah, I thought they were doing like a weird uh, like murder podcast. Thing, like true crime type <laughs> but it's him getting with a married chick which is different that's um but it, it gets the people going i don't know that that bridge the, it's just like i don't know that i'm as much as we might get negative in this next half hour or so <laughs> i, f- I f- love this song i love it so yeah. much <laughs> this song's great but like i had zero idea about what it is actually about i just was I don't know. I figured oh, it's like, either. oh, hey, they're sitting under the stars and they're watching. You know, it's like a, a description of a night that they had or something. Maybe I don't know. Like, well, f- <laughs> that makes it a little <laughs> yeah. just like the whole uh, fall in the grave. I've been digging myself, but there's room for two. That kind of seems to take on more meaning now. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Fingerprints sold me out. It's it's way more nefarious than I maybe then at first glance, but. A part of me likes that now. <laughs> no, I- yeah. Couple quick lyric notes. Jaeger's so sweet, but if keeps you around, then I'm down is like an all time I'm 14 and don't drink liquor yet. <laughs> line, but I know this song's about my relationship. Like, I didn't even really know Jaeger was a brand of whatever. Um, I think, Tom, to answer your Taking Back Sunday thing, or my Taking Back Sunday thing, intentions light the fire in Dear Maria when he's like, there's a story at the bottom of this bottle and I'm the pen. There's, a, I think there's like, Take it back Sunday were the kings of this. And when I say kings, it was annoying at times to me, but kind of like an AP lit class, like <laughs> the poetry on your napkins is pathetic. Like, okay, whatever. You know, like <laughs> what the f- does that even mean? But to me, there's kind of like the intentions, like the fire stuff is a little like, oh, okay, I don't know. Not that I, I ate it up at the time and I still do. I love this band, but I don't know. There's, there's kind of like an AP lit lyrics, subgenre, subgenre <laughs> that I think all time low and take it back Sunday in we're in, for me, until this week, when I learned that All Time Low is and probably has a, always has been just like a horny party band, I guess. Um, <laughs> so I was way off, but I thought they were like a want to be taken back Sunday lyric band for the longest time, mostly for the lines like that. I, hopefully, that clarifies where I was coming from. But again, I had not heard. Um, <laughs> not only had not I, I hadn't heard this is how we do, but I didn't know they even used phrases like this is how we do. So there's like kind of a confidence and non emo ness that even comes with talking like that, I guess. Anyway, I mean, it's a bit all over the place. And again, when you have a band coming in that has to write nine songs in the studio, what can you really expect? You know, that, that's yeah, a maybe lot this of is just the mood place. they were in that week. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, hey, we're in LA for the first time recording. Let's talk, write a bunch of songs about getting really drunk and having sex with married women. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe it's uncharacteristic. Uh, but yeah, God tear for me uh, heading into track four. Yeah. Holly, would you turn me on? Just just full sand, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give this one a B. I don't have anything to say other than what we've already said about uh, H-O-R-N-Y being the theme of this album. Uh, but yeah, a B for me. I don't know if you guys have more about Let's Holly, get these teen hearts beating faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I think like the there's so many drug references that like the song is too soft to have the junky energy that they're really going for in this. And I think the melody has like a Christmas vibe to it. Like Mm -mm. just listen, it could totally be a Christmas song unless I have my notes mixed up. Cause I also have something in this song that's actually referring to beach. I could be talking about track number five right now. I don't know what happens <laughs> sometimes, but either this song or the next one has a Christmas song like melody. And I'm so sorry <laughs> to everyone. I think you're right. I think there's like bells in this one. I, I think you're right. Say, like I, I, could... That does sound 
like that would be in this song. And then I guess, you know, the idea of Holly, like I guess Holly Bells, I don't know. That's oh, a yeah. connection, but <laughs> rebrand it. <laughs> <laughs> Punk goes Christmas, rebrand it, rewrite it. It'd be easy and it would still be pretty good. <laughs> so I guess it would be Holly Bells. Will you turn me on? Holly Bells. I don't know. I don't think sex needs to be had necessarily. <laughs> I think it could just be Holly is hanging in the hallway or something. I'd just keep it real like, I don't know though. But it uh, again, it could be. It could so, be. <laughs> speaking of this song, I, I guess I never. This is one of those albums that, like, I've I've listened to it for a really long time, but never really dove into the lyrics. I guess beyond what I could just understand from them singing. But there's yeah. this <laughs> particular line I, I'm reading now. It's like, holy, sh-. never even caught that. But he says, uh, "Yeah, I'm, I'm a deer in your headlights. Well, what's left of me, you'll swallow soon." <laughs> uh, I I missed it. I wow, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, damn. <laughs> right? <laughs> was, was, it, was it recorded in the Los Angeles metropolitan area? Like, were they? No, Baltimore. On, like, it, so it was recorded in Baltimore. Yeah. Okay, because the play on Hollywood, I was like, right. okay, are they out of their element? Is this uncharacteristic? But <laughs> never mind. If they were just in Baltimore behaving this way. Baltimore, <laughs> more interesting city than I thought, I guess. Interesting. I've oh. never been. It's interesting. Yeah. I've ne- <laughs> well, I've never been there and never officially been to Jacksonville, but between this and the yellow card album we recently talked about, it's like, I guess there's just teen dudes doing stuff all over the place. So, um, <laughs> you know, I've always assumed Baltimore and Jacksonville weren't like, I know there's a good baseball stadium in Baltimore and it's like historic and uh, everything like that. But yeah, I was never in a rush to go there, but now I'm like, okay. Uh, now I'm even have a weirder vibe from both of those cities based on these albums. I'm not sure. Dude, Baltimore has a crazy pop punk and hardcore scene. Like really, that's awesome. Baltimore's incredible. I it's dirty, it's sketchy, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> I I always went to Baltimore for shows when I was living in the D.C. area. Yeah, but little little sketch, little sketch, and horny dudes everywhere, no matter where you look. So well, look hey, out. there you go. That that <laughs> that informs that informs this particular track quite a bit. I'd say. <laughs> I, I give it a. I don't know the lowest whatever it is not a f- not not a yeah enough. I think Jeremy just for the record uh, on the show a B minus is like the biggest disgrace ever you never go <laughs> kind of below <laughs> so yeah if, if you're gonna go below a B no you're good um, but yeah so I, I'm gonna give this a B and just you oh, know I, yeah. I, I concur I'll say a B as well B all right the beach uh, in my eyes has the same energy as pool party by the Aquabats <laughs> just dudes having fun through that bridge ball in the pool. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My notes are as follows: party band, party summer, party teeth, party jeans, party party. There is um, this might be the song that represents the album the best based on how it was branded. But we haven't even gotten to Dear Maria or um, Remembering Sunday yet, so there's definitely a lot of ground to cover still. Uh, but I don't know. What do you guys think of Beach? I mean, if if the cover art could sing, it'd be singing the song. <laughs> that's i mean that that's accurate i, I like it i really do I mean, it's it's just a fun to kind of turn your brain off and just have fun with it song i guess there's not i mean i guess every song kind of it's not super deep here but this one in particular seems to not take itself too seriously which is kind of nice i feel like they're really showing their age with this song i think alex was 19 or 20 at the time uh it kind of confuses me. It's like the the song is just the beach, <laughs> like, <laughs> which to me is so funny. Like, you know, you're talking about AP lit or whatever, just the beach. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, yeah. The beach. You are successfully poking holes through my AP lit lyricist band <laughs> subgenre theory. So uh, to me, I just, I don't get, and again, it doesn't, not every song needs to be this great masterpiece songs can just be fun for the sake of being fun but it's like about the beach they're showing their teeth someone in the bridge won't stop lying like i i just don't know what they're even going for (laughs) it seems like (laughs) a cocaine induced like just tirade of emotions i don't i just don't really know and again i listened to this song for the first time today so i have nothing to like attach it to no strong memories or anything to me it sounds like 
they had one day left at the studio and the label asked for one more song and they wrote this in 15 minutes, which again, great things can happen in 15 minutes. Apparently I'll fall you into the dark was written and recorded in like 20, but I, I don't think this had the, uh, the, the same amount of emotional, uh, success <laughs> that that song did. I think I'm going to go a minus for the sake of if we're taking it for what it is, this is a, a fun neon era album and this is a fun beach song called beach or the beach <laughs> it's it's allowed to be an a because it's exactly they told us you know the lyric he said earlier about all i can think about is sex it's like it's that's apparent but accurate <laughs> it's like this song is is ended up being about the beach it's not like there weren't fair warnings based on the color of the album cover and all that so it's like if you're coming to this record hoping to have like a war on drugs experience that's you're just you're the problem you know if you're coming to this while perhaps being at the beach, then you're probably like, yeah, I need it. This is the right song for the right time. I'm going to say it's an A because it's good at what it is. Okay. Yeah. I'd say it's an A uh, also because uh, apparently the uh, every, everybody's li- living like they're crazy in love line that uh, according to Alex is a Beyonce reference. So that's kind of fun. They slipped that in there. Oh, Ooh. So that was my dad's favorite song layered. for a while. And he... <laughs> nice. That's cool. That is pretty fun. So yeah, I'll give it an A. I'll give it a B. I just, I don't, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) But. All right. I don't know how much time. Oh, go ahead. They're going to redeem themselves. Track six. Dear Maria. Parentheses count me in. All right. Got a break in real quick. Couple of things. First of all, I am terribly sorry for the awful elevator music i'm working on writing something for the patreon council of elders shout out that's right our patreon contributors who are the emo elders get shout outs in the episode right now we've got andre provost our buddy from twitter the boy dre what's up dude and we have recently fellow pop punk enthusiast johnny leftwich of the steve johnson happy hour podcast dude thanks so much for signing up both of you so grateful to have you here gonna be shouting your name out in every episode council of elders unite thank you all so much if you'd like to check out the patreon you can go to patreon.com slash reminiscent thank you all so much back to the show is this their best song? Yes. I don't think so, but... Oh. Ooh. Okay. What is their best song? Well, it may not be their best, but honestly, uh, Remembering Sunday is my favorite. Um, that song f***ed <laughs> real hard, dude. I love it. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to... I kind of just want to skip ahead and talk about Remembering Sunday for the rest of the... Because there's just so many layers to it. Well, I was going to say we can skip because we already did a Dear Maria episode where we talked about the music video, episode 161. But really, we just talked about our road trip and then touched on the video for like three minutes. So <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> If you've been listening to the show since then, you probably have been waiting to ask what the f*** happened that episode. I think... There's, they're in a strip club. There's a chimpanzee in a diaper, and that is honestly very accurate description of the whole thing. So <laughs> there's not a ton more. So we were like caught halfway through the episode, and then we ended up just talking about one of our like favorite memories. But did you guys see that TikTok recently where the actress who plays Maria, um, basically was like, "Hey, it's me, uh, Maria, for real. Here, check it out. Here's proof." Uh, and there's a picture of her on set. She's like still not convinced. And then she show, pulls out the polka dot bikini and was like, "Oh." <laughs> Oh, and then uh, Jack, the guitarist on Twitter was like, holy sh**, you know, because it was, um, I don't know, jarring to see that these people really exist, you know, like you're just maybe a young actress or whatever. And then you end up in one of the most like uh, period defining <laughs> music videos. <laughs> and you're I, like, that's just, that's got to be just your life from there on out, I guess, unless you, I don't know. You know what I mean? It, I can't imagine, it, probably a, a strange thing to have starred in that video, I guess is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I was going to mention that because I saw that and was like, holy sh**. It was not actually weird, but it was like, holy crap, that's pretty cool. I wonder, well, I guess I have a lot of questions about that video, but um, uh, obviously God Tier song for me, maybe not obviously, but it definitely is. Is it their best song? You know, I saw them live, I think maybe like eight-ish years ago. I think they were opening up for Blink on the first Skiba tour. I saw them in Pittsburgh and they didn't play Jay-Z Ray at all. And I was like pretty confused coming from that only very familiar with put up or shut up in that vein but they played this song and waitlist and some of the other stuff and i guess i their career is so much more 
if not like very much more defined by what came after Put Up or Shut Up, I guess, I'm, I realized. When I really loved that version of the band that was just whatever was on my iPod at the time. But um, I don't know. This has got to be in their top three, probably in their top two. I don't know. I wonder how many people tweet at us at underscore reminiscent FM, I guess, if, uh, I don't know, is this their best song? It's got to be close. I think it's got to be. It's probably my favorite. This and JC Ray. But again, my entire life, I've only known about five of their songs. So not a deep one to pull from. For me, it's JC Ray. I love you guys just going full chaos theory and saying it's Remembering Sunday. I can't <laughs> wait to touch on that. Uh, that song is... F- let's just... Here, let's... What's the next one? We could probably... Uh, Shameless is next, which... I mean, this one I actually really liked just because he, he said the F word in it. And I always thought it was fun. I don't know. Right. Um, but... <laughs> Swear, swearing's terrific. It's, 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 uh, it's very nice. It just doesn't really make much sense. Uh, I guess the the chord, none of it makes any sense, but it's a just a fun <laughs> song. I'm like, oh, cool, yeah. It's a so- it sounds cool, but it's a good lead in to uh, remembering Sunday. I think. So you're saying this is one of the better songs on the record because it aids remembering Sunday appropriately. Like it's a good <laughs> in service of the goat. Remembering Sunday, shameless is a a fine stepping stone. It's 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 there. It's good enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Some of these some of these songs on the album, like not even hating. It's a fun album. I enjoyed listening to it and kind of revisiting the parts I knew and hadn't known over the past few weeks. This and Beach and Holly, would you turn me on? And uh, track two, Let It Roll. They're just. I mean, I don't think it kind of objectively sound pretty similar, right? Like I'm not going crazy, but I guess if you like the band and are in the mood for it, it's it's scratching that itch. But for me, by Shameless, I'm like, okay, this is a bit of a repetitive album? Question mark. And you kind of expect track eight to be the same and follow in that vein, not to jump ahead. But um, I did want to say about Shameless, relatable in the sense that, you know, he references like, you're so shameless, you act like you're famous. Uh, relatable in the sense that when you're a teen, your crush is like, is the only celebrity in your life? Because you're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of in that mindset of like, this is the only thing that matters. The world revolves around this person type thing. So I, I could picture young me being very into this album had I been aware of it or owned it at the time and being like, this song makes sense, man. It all checks out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like the most purely pop punk song on the record. I already forget what it what it's about, what it sounds like. But um, I think I would probably just give it an A by the the fact that I don't have any negative comments on this song, but I don't remember it at all. But uh, I'd go with an A. I don't know. I'm just stoked to talk about remembering Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, this is the reason we gathered here today, really. I'll give it an A and we can just move along. Uh, but but a good version of what this album is and generally has, I think, shameless. It should be noted. Like a, a good song. Better than Come One, Come All, which we'll get to later. Oof. But okay, track eight, Remembering Sunday. Oof. Just... Any thoughts? Should we say a prayer first or what's like, uh, should we kneel before the altar of the greatness? Here, I'll, I'll ask this to jump off. Is this the good kind of bad or the bad kind of good? <laughs> I think it's a good kind of good. I don't know. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's quirky. It's not without its quirks. It's cheesy. It's corny. It's the song that everyone that just learned guitar last week played at the campfire. Um, <laughs> I remember it being a huge talking point, like people that didn't know all time low people that didn't listen to this genre, pop punk, neon, whatever knew this song. And I just have this Who was one that memory. guardian angel song. I was oh, just about to say that. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Red jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I vividly remember being at, I had like a birthday party or a graduation party at Hannah's house one year because they had a bonfire and their neighbors were also having a bonfire. And this kid came over with a guitar and just butchered the hell out of the song. And I wish I could see a video of that. <laughs> <laughs> and also like what what was the song? Live Live Like Lions, Living Like Lions. Who was that? That too. He just like performed for both songs for us. But I I love this song. It's, a, you know, a good duet is always great. A Day to Remember pulled out that one duet out of nowhere. And it's like the one that, that I guess, transcended the band and got them into everyone's ears. I, I feel like this was that for All Time Low. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned it's something everybody knew. And I, I was going to bring up, 
Guardian Angel by Red Jumpsuit Apparatus as one of those like, oh, <laughs> this is the punk acoustic song that like quenches people's like dire need for comfort or something. Like, <laughs> it is definitely like, I don't know when you, I don't know. The two eggs don't last like the feeling of what he needs line <laughs> in particular <laughs> is. Ah, yes. So, so like for me, the reason I was doing the AP Lit stuff and I'll stop trying to like save my take because I you've poked enough holes in it that it doesn't hold water anymore. But <laughs> like, not knowing the beach and not knowing this is how we do, going off of like, there's a story at the bottom of this bottle and I'm the pen type stuff. Remembering Sunday, two eggs don't last like the feeling of what he needs type stuff. I'm like, okay, this is a wannabe taken back Sunday AP lit band. I know they're not, <laughs> but can you at least, I hope that provides a, a little bit more of a glimpse as to what my perception of this band was prior to like every moment of their career after Put Up or Shut Up. I'm just trying to try to okay. save my own. Okay, I'll, I'll bend. On they have their moments. They certainly do, and I will give it to them. I've never heard someone sing about eggs before, so they <laughs> they hold it down <laughs> as the official egg band of the neon era. <laughs> I'll, mm. I'll give you that. Club horn that. Shit. That's the hottest <laughs> take we've had in years. That line was always jarring. Like I knew it was coming, and it still like slapped me in the face every time. It's yes. it is a just a weird thing to slip into the song like that i mean and i don't know the, the idea of two eggs not lasting as i guess is not the same as the girl or the love or whatever it's like well no shit. like <laughs> it is the love the married woman getting back with her husband and she's not there anymore type stuff mm. i'm trying to piece together this album a little bit it might not be but i'd love if he was just remaining a random breakfast <laughs> with this woman who was like hey this was fun you're a cute Teen? Damn it, what am I doing? I've got to get out of here. And then she just leaves and he eats his eggs all sad. I don't so know. That's probably not what the song was about. Apparently, this the subject of this song is the same subject as the song Vegas, which is coming up next. I don't know if that's the married woman. Also, I didn't realize there was a girl. Oh, we'll get to that later. But um, I don't know. Might not be the married woman. I always loved the controversy mm. over some allusion to suicide. And apparently Alex is like, no, it's just about a girl on a plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, on a plane. Yeah. Like um, so many thousands of feet off the ground. I'm over you now. I'm at home in the clouds towering over your head. All these people are like, he wants to be with the girl, but the girl committed suicide. And he's like, no, not at all. <laughs> like That's not what oh. I was saying. <laughs> Yeah, Jeremy, that you had made a note of that too. You you weren't sure if it was a death or a breakup. Yeah, I was like, made it. Is she dead? Because she sounds dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> or is, are they just being God. super dramatic about it? So that's that makes way more sense. Yeah, I, I think she just kind of left. <laughs> but I don't yeah, know. there you go. In my heart, it was the married woman. It's like, I what the hell am I even doing here? I gotta go, man. I gotta go for real. Um, <laughs> I, I will say this: funny how it rained all day still sends fucking shivers down my spine it uh <laughs> for as insane as this song is and i kind of want to talk about the other vocals that come in in the last third of of everything um yeah funny how it rained all day is definitely probably my favorite line on the album i think i think i feel comfortable saying that it, it gets me every single time even now it's just like oof yeah yeah <laughs> this song is about my life <laughs> you, you know it's funny for for me this came out like in in like September, I think of 07, which would have been, I don't know, three months after, like, at the time, the biggest breakup of my life. So this song really oh, sank man. in. <laughs> oh, oh <no>. God. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear it, that. Um, I mean, Brutal. I was like 20, 22 or 23, maybe. And, you know, the, the, the whole end part where it's like, are you following me in my desperate endeavor to find my whoever, wherever she may be? And it's like, F you, man. Yes, I get that. <laughs> And then, you know, Juliet Sims comes in and she's like belting it out. And I'm just like, F I am sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this song goes like when the drums and guitars I think come in. The new tagline. I was going to say that's the new tagline for our show. F I am sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this song always really got me. It has that like in that dramatic intense over the top angstiness the drums and the electric guitars come in the da, 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 as the acoustic keeps riding it out i thought it was brilliantly composed a girl comes in randomly and the 
you know, you kind of mentioned Pat, like good or bad, the girl vocals. They start off a little weird because it's almost like too dramatic. I'm not coming back. <laughs> like, super well, that's weird. another guy, right? <laughs> it sounds like the lead singer from Detroit. Honestly, it sounds like that's there's like oh. the same voice that's haunted my uh, <laughs> pop punk experience for years. It's just this weird nasally dude, but this probably not the same guy. But to me, that's what it sounds like. Well, I mean, when she starts belting, she is like on it. I don't know if she was trying to like really differentiate the two voices going in and out, but especially when it comes in with out of my mind, keeping an eye on the world or whatever, she is ripping that part. And like, even if the rest of the song was awful, I feel like in those last few moments, it would redeem itself. And I feel like when I think of this song, I think of those last few lines because they're so good, so well-performed. I think it's great. A little shaky start when she comes in, but then the layering kind of takes over and it, it develops a little further. But I I love it. This is such dramatic angstiness. Like you said, uh, your garden angel or whatever. It's or um oh, what's that boys like girl song? Uh Thunder or whatever. It's just like, oh my god, like it's so over the top, but it kind of works and I, I give it a god tier. I love it. Damn, oh, yeah. More than kind of works. Right. It. <laughs> yeah. It, it works on every level, I think. It's an A++. Plus plus. Yeah. Like, it's my favorite by them just by far. At least for me. Like I said, I have a very specific time period and memory and thing kind of attached to it, for better or worse. So, you know, it always kind of like, ah, that time sucked. <laughs> <laughs> right, I can see right. why... Now I know why you're such a big all-time low fan, Jeremy. They were there for you when you needed them the most. They really were. Right. Sounds like. There was um, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I mean, there was a lot going on around that time. Like it was like a lot going on, and then like some other shit happened. It was like, oh, that breakup's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, right. there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Alex Gasgarth. I'll go God tier. Uh, as much as I'm like, this is the, probably the of all. The, so sometimes we talk about this on the show. Is this something you'd blare out of your car? At a, at a red light. This is the most perfect example of a fucking, of course not, so, a, a song of that type. But it's definitely blared in the headphones. There for the teens when they needed it. Give them something to cry for. Um, I was eating it up at the time. And still kind of am. Uh, still kind of am. It's, yeah. it's good. It's good. I guess it's the good kind of good. You're right, Tom. I, I was being too negative. I, I should uh, have more of a positive attitude with this type of thing. Yeah. All right. Unanimous God tier? I think so. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mark it. All right. Well then let's uh let's make our way to Vegas. Another kind of I don't know, whatever. Throw away for me anyway, but let's okay. do it. Okay, here's here's my thing with Vegas. You know, we are try to do like loose research. I know we're just dumb mostly, <laughs> but you know, there's the me and my alone time element of emo. And I think we already established this is not really an email album, but I'm just bear with me here. There's me and my alone time. And then there's like the romantic interest and pining over the romantic interest. I, I guess I'm proposing a third category of emo, which is like, I f-ing love my friends. And I, that's what this song is to me. Like I would pick my friends over you. Um, I think they named the band after the newfound glory lyrics and stuff. So I don't know if this right. is a nod to my friends over you or anything like that. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like a, Definitely, definitely a, f- a fan of hanging with my buds, just bros being guys, guys being dudes uh, type thing going on here. Uh, that's my, <laughs> the only thing I wrote down for the song. I don't really, there are no references <laughs> to lyrics or anything here, so it must not have left a huge imprint on me. Yeah, I think 2011 and 12 really dominated the like, being reckless with my friends like that was the whole like city lights again i mentioned them they had a song just in case you don't know we're the kids that own this skyline and it's like what what are you talking about you're like 17 you don't own anything (laughs) like it's just so overly confident my friends are the best we're the craziest dudes you've ever met but like really they just sit around on a couch playing guitar and like eating pizza you know it's like it's so overhyped It, it, it i feel like it stems from a lot of like self-confidence issues or something but i'm really really glad that the genre isn't all of this anymore even my old band the good fight in 2012 we were guilty of like writing a song about friends and uh, it was just so cheap i don't know i didn't i didn't like it at the time i didn't like being a part of it i cannot relate to it anymore and i'm glad it's over are you anti having friends tom are you (laughs) anti-friendship I hate friends, Pat. 
<laughs> Damn, dude. Damn, dude. Strong words. Very strong words. That's going to make the show pretty awkward moving forward, I would think. <laughs> I know. Right. Damn. Drama on the Tom anti friends. That's a bummer for me. Pat's That's a bummer for peanut me butters. specifically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was decidedly less uh, less dramatic <laughs> of a claim. <laughs> well, I can't be your friend because I love peanut butter. That's the uh, Damn. the hot controversy here, reminiscent. Yeah, <laughs> my fingertips are holding onto the cracks in our foundation, so, <laughs> and I know that I should let go, but I can't. Kate Nash. Okay, um, I'm going to give this Vegas a. An A minus. I don't know. It just is another song that sounds like the songs. Not to be, not to just be that like dismissive because I do love it, but also not that much. <laughs> I give it a B. It feels like a throwaway again. Yeah, I mean, it's fine if you like it. That's fine. I just I don't feel anything. I mean, I I give it a B plus. Like after uh, remembering Sunday, it's kind of hard to like like anything that much again, right? So. <laughs> Just recalibrates your taste palette for life in general. <laughs> like, it made me think about what you guys said on a, a previous episode about how like no good track is ever track eight or something like that. Like it was something to that effect. But right, yeah. that song definitely, I think, is Ooh. you know it's 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 the <gasps> exception, not the rule. But I mean, it's it is a track eight. Wow. Yeah, all the small things and remembering Sunday. We need more examples of excellent track eights. People, <laughs> which yeah. one's the better song? That's the oh, real oh, question. Small things. Oh, f- <laughs> f- I mean, Jeremy, you come into you come into our house on the day of our daughter's wedding, and you kid us with no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I will I will say this now. Don't hang me. Don't fucking just like cut me out of the show completely. But if I had to pick, I guess a least favorite or one not least favorite, I guess, but just overplayed and whatever. All the small things is one of those songs that I could just like never hear again and be totally fine. <laughs> oh shit. That being said, I do love Blink. I, I love what they do, but I think that song I heard it so damn much. Uh, like, I don't even mind the take. I'm just feeling Tom's blood boil from two time zones away. <laughs> Wait, Jeremy, how old are you again? I am 36. Okay. First of all, ew, gross. But second of all, <laughs> <laughs> I I missed all the small things on the radio because I'm 29. So like I I was not there for that. And there definitely are I mean, I can never play out songs. I will listen to this day, I'll listen to nothing but all the small things for three days straight. Like put a Ooh. solid ten hours into it. But I definitely I, I get that. You know, you probably caught it on the radio every day all the time before streaming was a thing so yeah. drl like the video and uh i mean it just and, and i guess to me too there were other songs that weren't singles that i was super into on the the yeah. album itself you know what i mean so like i I'd, i may have played the whole album out to myself but that one song i was like damn it's on again F- i'll just skip it <laughs> and just you know here's a sign that we're all I guess, you know, not to be like, we're old, huh, guys? Like, not to do too, like, coffee cooler or, like, <laughs> water cooler talk. It was in a fucking car commercial, like, pretty recently. Yes. I was like, man, man, that's, that's, re- that's pretty, that's a big moment in someone's life when, like, a song you liked as a child is in a car commercial. That's the beginning of the end for sure. 20 years later, right? It's like a recent car commercial. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Put them on classic radio with the Almond Brothers. Put a fork <laughs> in us. We're done. It's over. It's been a nice run, We're, but I guess we die now, you know. I do think about that sometimes, like, when do our, like, the bands that we grew up with start to replace the bands that our parents grew up with? Right. I mean, Is like... Blink classic rock? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's scary. Again, I, I mean, just purely off of age, I guess, it's like, you know, like Nirvana or like, I don't know, fucking Stone Temple Pilots, just whatever early 90s bands that were doing all this stuff, it's like, well, we're like 30 years removed from some of their stuff, and it's like... Looking back to the 2000s, like, you know, we're listening to Tom Petty and whatever other things like from the 70s, 80s. And it's like, that was the quote unquote classic rock. So it's like, shouldn't this be classic rock now, I guess? Yeah, Chick Klosterman has that funny thing where he's like, I still feel like that first Shins record came out like last year, but it's been 20 years or whatever. Like, I can't (laughs) picture Portugal the Man being classic rock. They're always like going to be that new indie band that like (laughs) I was felt cool for even knowing about, even though I was already late to the party on them. Um, Yeah. Like, oh, Manchester Orchestra, good thing they're... And right after that, Leonard Skinner on this all rock of the <laughs> last half of the millennia station. Like, I just can't picture it in any form at all. But anyway. Sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs>
Now I got, yeah, maybe that's a, one of the layers of hell is just like Leonard Skinner and Pink Floyd and shit intermixed with like really weird choices of 2000s music on the same playlist. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, track 10, Stay Awake. Okay, here's my two takeaways. I wrote down, I got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. This is Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run if it had sex with that, the Black Eyed Peas in general, I guess, or that <laughs> specifically that song, I got a feeling. Um, kind of like my joke for this whole album, I guess, is in case they hadn't f-ing made it clear, they are leaving town and they are leaving tonight. <laughs> like, not that anybody cares, but if you do, we'll just remind you that we're leaving and tonight's going to be legendary. We're leaving tonight. Tonight's going to be a good night. And yeah, I don't know. To me, it's like, okay, God damn it, when does this album end? But um, <laughs> not that negative. It's good. But yeah. also, yeah, I, I think the repetitive nature of it, I think, I don't know if we can all agree that it's an element to this record, maybe a touch. It, yeah, it's very repetitive. Again, they might have wrote every lyric in one week when they were partying in the studio. But I, I don't know. I kind of feel like Remembering Sunday should have been the natural ending of this record. But yeah. I actually felt like this should have been a single. Again, heard it for the first time today. I thought it was super fun. Pop punk kids really love talking about fucking ships and the ocean and stuff. But I thought it was a really fun song. And I say that like I don't have a whole sleeve of nautical tattoos but <laughs> anyways anyways i think it's a really good song yeah I, I do like it it's just like i said it's, it's fun it's a good um uh i don't know it's just it's uh, it's hard to describe like i'm trying to remember how it even goes honestly but it's uh i do like it and it's just like a fun like you said just good to have fun song whatever the f- right but I'm sorry. I'm hung up on the fact that it, apparently, I guess it's about a conversation between Wendy and Peter Pan. Right, right. So that's <laughs> that's really scrambling my brain right now. <laughs> yeah, my AP Lit Band thing is has been officially burned. Like it's not even in a trash can, crumpled up to be saved later by someone who wants to save it. It's just over. It's just over. I I can't say that anymore. Sorry, Pat. Yeah, you're you lost that one, buddy. <laughs> Fun song though. I'll give it an A. Cause I, it made me want to listen to it again where a lot of the other songs were like, when I'm listening to stuff I'm not familiar with for the show, I try to not skip anything, but it was really hard to not skip a lot of songs on this album. But this one, I went back and listened to it a second time. So naturally it has to be an A. Oh, there you go. I'll give it an A. And to, to my RIP, my take about them being an AP lit band, I will say that maybe it's not my weekend, but hopefully it'll be my year. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Which the existence of that song? Oh, boo! F- you. <laughs> I'm, yeah, you don't. You don't have to kick me out. I'm already leaving. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, come one, come all. The weird. Uh, this is uh, weird for a couple reasons. You guys were saying because he wants to kill a fucking DJ. That's number one. <laughs> well, you, weird because you were saying the the band members don't even like it. Either. Yeah, that too. Like they were just like, no, nah, this song fucking sucks. But I mean, it's on the record. Um, apparently, it was the last song to be added too. So. I guess it was like a last, like, damn, we need one more song. I get that one. Yeah. I feel that way about a lot of songs on this album. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So, is this basically like what all the small things happen to you? The DJ, he's stuck in traffic, plays the song, same song over and over, so he kills the DJ, right? Like, that's the storyline? I mean, I, I guess. I, I was thinking maybe it was because, it, it, you know, it's a song that's reminding him of somebody, and he's like, God, I don't want to hear this song because it reminds me of whatever the fuck, right? So, like, I want to kill this guy because uh, he's, he's making me sad, I guess. That's what, that's what I always took away from it. But, I mean, it could just be that, too. It's like, ah, this, this DJ just sucks. He keeps playing the same song over and over. Who knows? They don't really make so, it clear. Right. A, change the station, right? But, B, yeah. <laughs> the song, like, can't even exist in 2020. Who's listening to terrestrial radio, as Squirrely Dan would put it? Like, with streaming, throw on Apple Music, you can listen to whatever you want. So it leads me to the question, has streaming technology reduced DJ-related acts of violence in America? I think so. Yes, but is that a good thing? <laughs> yes, more deaths to DJs. <laughs> <laughs> Pro-death. Yeah, definitely fewer references to DJs in songs. I, I think that's fair to say. But more sitcom jokes about dating DJs? So there must be people DJing somewhere, just not in our pop punk's music, uh, apparently. 
Well, so, you know, in verse two, he's, I guess, apparently talking to the judge and jury after he's murdered this guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm, I'm an innocent man, and it would be a terrible injustice <laughs> to put me away without thinking about all the terrible mistakes the goddamn radio jockey makes. Like, he made me kill him. Like, it's, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> I, I will say bold move defending yourself in a murder trial. That's, I mean, that's confidence. You, you can't say the man's Alex isn't confident. That's, I mean. I just wrote, they're, they're showing their age again. Probably showing the rushed nature of the album writing process. Definitely. B minus, that's fine, whatever. Yeah, B minus, throw it in the they trash. Know it. I don't know. Just <laughs> skip it. <laughs> well, uh, Pat, what what about you? Um, I'm going to give this one, you know, a B, I guess. All right. Well, I think if you go through most of my grades will have been A's and I think Pop and Champagne's an A song for me. It's just fun and kind of like informs similar to track one. The last track is like, okay, they're kind of settling into a career of like very palatable pop rock for like the next, they've been, I think they were like pretty recently nominated for VMAs and like they've been relevant to their credit, I guess for a while, (laughs) but it's such a departure from what I imagine this band being having only heard kind of almost in my own personal idiot bubble put up or shut up forever yeah you know but then there's this like 95 percent of their career that is I guess what I'm trying to say very similar to pop and champagne like hey I can put this on in a I don't know a f-ing, like dentist office or something you know it's just very <laughs> palatable um I don't know yeah I, I like it though it's good it's a it's hard to like it doesn't take a risk though, so it can't be great. I guess is what I think where I land on this album. It's very good and very fun and serves a purpose. But I'm gonna give it an A, but not a god tier overall for this song or the album overall. I think is where I land on this one. It's it's good. It's fine. I'll give it an A minus. Not really much to say. Yeah, palatable pop punk. Like all I can think of after this album is damned if I do, you damned if I don't, which is like the to me the extreme side of uppercase pop lowercase punk which is very good i can hear them inching towards that in some of these songs and I Wait, weightless song. isn't even a bad song but it's just kind of a remake of the friends theme it's kind of like i just really what, what's going on i don't even know it <laughs> i think you would recognize if you heard it um it's the lyrics i'm jokingly said in conversation snuck into conversation earlier <laughs> okay about it not being your weekend <laughs> anyway i'm just saying it's like oh that's weightless yeah, that's weightless. Oh, I know. Okay, I know that song. I know that song. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know the name of it. I, w- I mean, this one honestly, I give it probably an A. Like it's a. I guess going back to the song before, B minus, whatever. Like I said, throwing the trash. But this song, A. It's a strong closer. I do really like it. You know, I've always really kind of enjoyed this song quite a bit. But yeah, same. Uh, could it have been better served earlier in the album? You move re- remembering Sunday to the end. Let it close like yeah. uh, Data Remember did on Homesick with their ballad. That's a good yeah, totally. pal- palate cleanser, whatever, to a really heavy f-ing album. And then that just like nicely, yeah. quietly closes it out, you know? Jeremy, I like that because if you went from this is how we do into pop and champagne, like, hey, we're the party, you're the people, you got me pop and champagne, we're still having fun, maybe beach track three or some sh- I don't know. But like, and then introduce kind of the weird, I started f-ing a wife storyline <laughs> later in the album and then finish with Remembering Sunday. Like a party that went wrong and eventually devolves into egg-based chaos. <laughs> yes, I, I think that is a con- <laughs> that is a concept album would have worked would have been at least way more interesting. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a little scattered. But you're right; it is it's f-ing good. It's a good song. I mean, at least narratively, that would have made a lot more sense. Like instead yeah, of being now all I'm, over I, the place. I would watch that movie. <laughs> what would the movie be called? Two eggs, just eggs. <laughs> I would love to propose a new album like a track order on twitter and see if we can really optimize this album for storyline because i think there's there's a lot of again recurring themes like they can be placed better so it's not just the same song three times in a row I, i'd like to to run that experiment is maria the wife like is maria dear maria becomes the plea to, for the wife to come with him at that point right uh, Although the wife would have to be a stripper at that but maybe we don't have to go that deep lyrically but i don't know <laughs> I'm into it now. now, But it depends if the husband's a bad guy. You know, if he's not, then it's, you just kind of feel like maybe ask Gascarts, our protagonist is this guy. You know, <laughs> right. He's at the beach showing off his teeth. It's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, as a, as a whole album, I don't, it's, it's fine. It's a little all over the place. To me, it sounds like 
a rushed second album, which I think is what it is. And um, that's fine. I mean, again, we got Dear Maria and Remembering Sunday out of it. So it's like, you know, I, I don't hate it for what it is, but still a, more appreciate the singles that I've had for years and years. Uh, not angry about it. Probably not ever going to revisit it, to be honest, but glad we did it. I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to do it one way or another. Jeremy, I do appreciate you helping us out because obviously we would have floundered more than a little <laughs> if we tried to do this alone. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate you guys, you know, wanting to do this again and everything. It, uh, for, like, like I said earlier, for me, there's like a song or two that really holds significance and I like the album as a whole, but revisiting it now after not listening to it from probably like a year, maybe it's like, okay, there's definitely some things about it that are like, ah, it's like you said, things sort of kind of run together and it sounds about the same. Some of the songs and like, there's a lot of songs back to back to back that are like, that's the same song. But <laughs> right. It, uh, overall is pretty great. And then like the, the vinyl pressing that I got of it is like, it's like hand numbered. It's like one out of 300 that they, they Whoa. repressed last year. So that was like a big deal. Like, oh, I was like, yes, I finally got this one. And uh, so, you know, it's pretty exciting. Awesome. Can I just compliment the name of your show real quick before we get out of here, Jeremy? The Vinyl Countdown. I didn't even know it was a pun for like a year, but that's got to be one of the better (laughs) podcast names out there. Wait, what pun? I just kudos on being a genius. Instead of the Final Countdown, it's the Vinyl Countdown. Oh, my God. What? (laughs) That well. Wow. Before oh, I bask in the glory of my genius, I will actually have to say my friend uh, Lauren is the one who actually named it because I had no idea what to name it. So she mentioned, she's like, oh, what about the vinyl count? And I like immediately just like had that, I guess, in the back of her head. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. That's it. That's the name. You try to play it all cool. Like, yeah, that could work. Yeah, I cannot take any credit at all for that. That's awesome, though. You, I really want someone to record a cover of "It's the Final Countdown." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to recut the uh, the intro music. That's awesome. Love it. It's it's so hard to do that though because like like Jeff from a Thursday, like he personally gave me permission to use that song. So I was like, I got I gotta have to uh, use it now. I mean, but I mean, <laughs> Thursday is my favorite band, and you know, as you guys know, but you know, it's kind of like. I have thought about switching it up a little bit here and there, like just maybe for like special shows or finding a way to uh, incorporate something different. Like I did for 90s month, I did the uh, PlayStation 1 like theme or whatever, like the when you start oh, it up. And you dude, know, it's just... Love that. There, there's a couple of things I could do. I mean, I, you know, I know enough musicians in town I could be like, hey, please make this song for me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool as hell. Well, cool, man. Um, Where... Where can we find your show? And we'll put it in the in the show notes, of course. But um, and maybe I, we didn't really talk about what exactly you do on the show. I mean, I I like that you only talk. What's about the, the elevator pitch? Yeah, <laughs> give it to us. Uh, basically, I take a record from my collection every week, and I just talk about it, deep dive about the the pressing itself, the vinyl count, you know, our uh, rarity, this and that, you know, prices and availability and whatever, and then go into the bands a little bit, and then into the album itself, kind of uh, just break it down as, as best I can. And every now and again, I will have guests on, so that's always nice. That's about it, though. Just, a, I guess, a music reviewing podcast and also incorporating the vinyl element into it as well. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a dangerous podcast because, I mean, how many, how many uh, quote-unquote business expenses <laughs> do you have just because you want to talk about an album and you have to buy it on vinyl in order to talk about it, right? That is correct. Um Currently, not just for the show, but total, I have about 280. So, okay. So, <laughs> I've got enough material for at least a couple of years. <laughs> right. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we worry on this show, like, are we just, we did too many My Coming Romance things, shut it down, it's over. There's no more songs, but there's always, there's many, many deep, dark corners. So, yeah, I think, I don't think we're going to be ending anytime soon, but. Well, you want to give a song of the week and get out of here? Yeah, I actually, if you don't mind me going first, uh, I'm going to pick All Time Low's album opener off of what they just recently released, because um, I think, kind of similar to what we were saying today, like there's nothing bad about it. It's it's super good for what it is. Um, it's off of Wake Up Sunshine, uh, Some Kind of Disaster, track one. It's solid. It's good. I mean, 
we had some fun joking about them today, but they're a good band. They're yeah. one of the bands that I like in my life. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm also a fan of the music they're putting out more recently. So yeah, I'd, I'd check it out. It's it's solid. And explains the Sunshine Boy stuff on Twitter that I just didn't understand for the longest time. Oh. But. <laughs> <laughs> right. Man, I a friend of mine got me into Aurora lately, which is like, what is it, like a Norwegian, a younger Norwegian girl makes really, really interesting music. Uh, the song The Seed is really interesting. I've really been into one of her later albums lately. Just something different, total change of pace. Unlike anything I've really heard before. And I like the the rhythmic elements all throughout the song The Seed. So, yeah, a little, little different vibe for sure, but it's good stuff. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I had, I guess two in mind, but I guess I'll just pick the one because it's the newer of the two. This band, uh, Camps, out of uh, Lafayette, which is local for me, I guess about 45 minutes away or so, they just released a new single called Fix, right? And it's um, it's on Spotify. It's everywhere. You know, you get streaming, right? And it's just kind of a straightforward, kind of just punk song, like really short, loud. And I mean, uh, for for me, like they put on a, a wonderful live show. Like I've seen them a couple of times in town, like in basically like a was like essentially a, a room with a very, very, very tiny stage. And uh, <laughs> it's just, those types of shows are f-ing great. Like I miss that so much. Oh but, yeah, uh, me too. They're super high energy. And like, I've, I've seen videos of them on like bigger stages and actually getting a chance to move around and they're f-ing great. So yeah, I want to I want to shout them out. So camps with a fix. Nice. Awesome. Well, the links to all those will be in the show notes for this episode, reminiscentpodcast.com slash episode slash 189. Links to Jeremy's podcast. And um, thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we don't really do guests that often. So it was fun. It was fun to do something a little different. I uh, appreciate you making time and helping me through this album that I didn't know at all. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's like uh, the, the help was needed for both of us, I think, because we're like, I think we are so haunted by that one Jimmy Eat World <laughs> episode that we did. And we're like, we're going to have to do some of these records that are so obvious and we might need to call in some help when we need it. So yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging out with us, Jeremy. I, I appreciate you having me on, man. It was really fun. Well, all right. Love you guys. Talk to you all later. See you next week. Yeah. Stay safe, everybody. Love you both. And uh, Remembering Sunday is the best song ever written, I think, is the conclusion we all came to here. That's all the time we have. Uh, All right. Bye, everybody. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Huge thank you to our buddy Jeremy for really carrying a lot of weight on this one. Please, please, please make sure to check out the show notes and uh, check out his relief page for Hurricane Laura that happened in Louisiana. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM. Let us know, is Remembering Sunday the best song on this record? Thank you all so much. We'll talk to you next week. Stay home, stay safe. Love you all. Bye, everyone. Bye.